bless you. Today is January 9, 2017. Had a very strange thing happen, uh, experience, when I went in a mall the other day. Thought I would share that with you and a scripture that the Lord put on my heart. You know, we're living in, in a very strange time right now. You and I are seeing these strange things, hearing these strange things with our own eyes and ears. And uh, it started with uh, a very large boom that happened. I wish I would have got it on tape, but I didn't. And uh, it was a very large boom that happened. Uh, and it just seemed like it went on and on. It was a real long one, you know. And uh, I thought it was, you know, maybe just the television that I was watching, you know, the program at that moment that it was in the program. But then uh, my son came in and he said, did you hear that? And I said, well, yeah, I did. I just thought maybe it was, you know, something on the television. No, it was not. Because it was so real that the entire house just rattled and rolled and continued to uh, have this loud noise for quite a long time. It was not an earthquake. I didn't know it was a big accident that happened on the uh, road, which is a little distance from us. And it was just, you know, echoing because it was nighttime. But uh, we both sort of thought that it might have been thunder, but we still don't know what it was. But it was very, very unusual. And then I had uh, a very unusual thing happen when I had to go to the mall the other day. And so I walked in and have you ever walked in a place? I don't care if it's a room, it's a big area, whatever. And you feel like you are removed and you are more of an observer than a participator of whatever is happening. And I had to go to a couple of different places, different stores. And it was as though I was walking, observing, like I was removed and I was observing and I was like, it was like a so for real moment, you know, like a movie, like you weren't even really actually part of it, but you were watching it. That's the way the entire, and it was so real. It's like these experiences that the Lord is showing me and opening my eyes to are so much getting more and more real every single day. And, um, uh, it reminds me of the very, very for real experiences that the Lord had me in, in 1984 to 1987. For three years, I had these solid, solid experiences, if you want to call them that. And they were very real. And so this was the thing that I was in the mall the other day and you know, it came on me so subtly. This is the way a lot of these experiences with the Lord happens, that they just come on you so subtly that all of a sudden you find yourself in it, whatever it is, whether the Holy Spirit is manifesting in your room or you are all of a sudden, God takes you in this, uh, this level, of, this dimension, whatever you want to call it. So I was watching these people and, uh, you know, they had the sales on after the Christmas was over and, you know, 40% off, 70% off, 80% off. And the people were just like flies and they were just drowning in all of these boxes of clothing and, and everything else. They were just consumed with what could they get? What more, one more item they just had to have. And they were just like it was unbelievable it was it was so unbelievable and it was like you know have you ever felt like the lord just showed you with his ears and the way the lord thinks and he spoke to me and he was showing me he said do they, they don't they're so consumed with the moment with I've just got to have another one. There's no sati sat uh, they're not satisfied with whatever is in front of them. You know, they're not 
even really thinking about the Lord. They're just thinking about every single day they get up and they think about, well, they don't have enough of this. They don't have enough of that. They don't like this. That one is outdated. And it was like, um, I suppose this happened also because I was reading before uh, the very first day of the weekend, I think it was Friday evening, I was reading about a storm that had hit Northern California and the electricity was out, they were saying it was going to be out for six weeks. And I was reading the feed of, you know, uh, this was a forum and a lot of people were commenting and it was unbelievable the comments that people were making. Some people had peace and some people had no peace. Some people were angry at other people because they lived in a different situation where they had, uh, you know, they had food that they could, that were stored up food and, and water, you know, saved. And other people were in apartments and, and so they were very upset and angry at the people that uh, had supplies. And yet there were people in some situations that were saying, where are you? I'll try to help you. Another one was saying, well, you need to just get out of that 100 mile radius because you need to leave your house while this storm, while there's no electricity, you need to leave your house and just get where you can stay in an apartment or a motel or something like that until it passes. So you, I was reading all of this, you know, uh, people that there's no, I guess the media hasn't really covered this up in Northern California a lot because they're focusing on other things. And so here is this group of people. And one guy was even saying that he was sitting on his front porch and he was just shooting any animal that would go by and eating it. And people were saying, well, my food is all, you know, uh, rotten in my refrigerator. What do I do? And somebody else said, well, there's snow outside. Just go stick it in the snow. Desperation, desperation. And again, I say, when someone is in an emergency situation, you really see what comes out of them is what is inside of them. If people have the peace of God, whenever these things happen, they're going to firstly look to the Lord. And they're going to say, Father, help us. What do we do? But some of these people, they had no thought of asking the Lord at all. And then when I went to the mall and I saw a complete other side of the, you know, things that are happening, another side of the coin of life of people. And I saw these people just swarming like, you know, it was like a Jerry Lewis movie, like the old Jerry Lewis movies where, where people were just coming in these stores, you know, and they were just, the women were just fighting each other for this and for that. And they couldn't get enough. And, and I just looked at that. And it was like time just like slowed way down and I, everything went into slow motion and I could see all of these people. And I was thinking to myself, they are not even focusing on what is really important. They're spending their life in this one mode and they're not even thinking about what life is all about. So uh, it was it was unbelievable. I my heart really broke, and um, so just now before I was uh, turning this on, I was asking the Lord about a scripture, and He brought to my mind Hebrews eleven, the heavenly hope, and also Matthew twenty five. Hebrews eleven says, "These all died in faith, not having received the promises." But having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. You see, you and I, we are embracing and confessing we are strangers in this land. We are pilgrims. We are not poor, but we are strangers. 
this is not our home. So that's why when we go and we see a lot of these things and we see people, we experience a lot of these catastrophes that are happening in the world right now, the weather conditions, people are all afraid of the weather. But it says, for those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. You see, we are seeking our home is not here. We are embracing the fact that our home is in heaven. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them. We are assured. We cross the line. We don't need another pair of jeans. We don't need another fancy dress. We don't need another of the latest makeup. We don't need the guys. They don't need another tie, another fancy shirt. They realize if they are born again, they realize that they might not receive every single promise of God while we are alive here. But you see, we see our promises afar off and we are assured of them. We embrace them. We confess that our home is not here. Yes, we will come back with Christ. We will reign with Christ. But presently, presently, today, we are strangers in this land. We're strangers. So we're going to feel strange. We're going to feel removed. We're going to feel like things are over for a surreal movie at times. But we're not going to be startled or walk in fear of things that we don't understand because we follow the Lord. He is our peace. Matthew 25, read just a little bit. When the Son of Man, number 31, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all of the holy angels with him. You see, this is where we live. We live in the expectation that when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with them, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. You see, we, we, we think about these things daily. We believe it with all of our heart. We live it as though we know it's coming because we believe it. And before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats and he shall set the sheep on his right hand the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of, the fa of my father. Come, ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. You see, we haven't received our inheritance yet. I sort of get upset when I see these Prophetic people, they, they label themselves a prophet. I'm a prophet. I have trouble with that in the first place. I, I try to not say too much about it. But I'm just a person with feet. You're just a person with feet. The only one I feel that has the, that deserves any titles is God. Jesus. Jesus is the one that deserves all the titles. It says that we will cast them all at his feet anyway. Any earthly man that gives you a title, a some degree to hang on your wall, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Do you think it's really going to open another door for you because you've got a title? 
because you call yourself a prophet? Because you say, look at all of my achievements. I have some awards here right behind me. Maybe you've seen them. They're very nice. It's nice to be honored. But I'm not going to lay my foundation of working for the Lord every day to say, look what I've achieved. Look at my awards. I don't want you to see me. I want you to see Jesus. I don't want you to say, I want to do what Susan's doing. I want to have a ministry like Susan. No. God has something very special just for you that only you can do. Mentors are okay. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. But the best mentor I have is the Bible. The best mentor I have is the Holy Spirit. He's the one that knows it all. Okay, I'm getting off. <laughs> then shall the king say unto him on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, you clothed me. Sick, you visited me in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, Lord, when saw we, when saw we thee a hungered and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Or when we saw, when saw we, <laughs> thee, we can't say it. Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you. And when Jesus Christ says, Verily I say unto you, it will resonate through your entire being. Because every word Jesus says is power. It's not only coming out vocally, verbally, but it has power. Power. You will feel those words resonate right through your being. And the king, the king, the king of kings will answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Too bad. These, these people, hell wasn't even created for people. Hell, hell was created for the angels, the evil angels. For I was a hungered, and you gave me no meat. I was a thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick, and and in prison, and you visited me not. Then they shall also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? And then, then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not, unto the least of these, you did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. We want to keep our eyes on the Lord. We don't want to miss anything the Lord has for us. We don't we don't want to be consumed with going to malls, going to stores every time some magazine comes in the new, in the mail or you go see a tabloid. You you want to pick up that National Enquirer. You want to pick up that tabloid to see who cares about these celebrities. What they are not going to save you after you take your last breath. What does it matter? All I see with these celebrities anyway is the life of sin that they most of them have lived. 
finally is catching up with them. I saw a picture, I, I shouldn't name names and I'm not going to, but I saw one the other day. I couldn't believe it. You know, they're so beautiful. The, the entertainment industry is consumed with beauty. How beautiful you must look. And, and we look at how people are even consumed with how beautiful our first lady will be. What, you know, I, I want to say nothing wrong with beauty. I'm not meaning that. I'm saying that should not be the focus. In fact, I wish that the whole world were blind so we would have to walk by faith and none of us would see except by whatever the Spirit of God would see us. Could you imagine? I saw uh, a clip, a couple of clips from, um, I think it was Europe's Got Talent or something, England's Got Talent. I, I don't watch those shows very much. And I was asked to watch just a couple of clips, so I did. And I saw that. And these people came out and they all had handicaps. They all had handicaps. This one kid walked out. He had, he had been uh, in a war zone with his brother. And this English lady came and she saw them in uh, wherever it was, Iran, Iraq, I don't know. And she fell in love with both of these little boys who their limbs were all messed up because whatever happened, I don't know if the bomb had hit them or whatever, but they were all messed up with their limbs. They, they couldn't, you know, they couldn't function normally. So this one young boy, he was about 18 and he wanted to go out and sing on this England's Got Talent. So he came out and he sang. And, and of course the crowd we had uh was consumed with emotion you know the guy said what are you going to sing he said imagine by john lennon we all know the lyrics of that song john lennon i do not believe was saved but john lennon hoped for a perfect world where there would be no country nothing to kill or die for and no religion, too. Well, religion is not going to save you. But how sad that he misses the most important thing in, in the song about Jesus. Why do people, these celebrities, they're so afraid to talk about Jesus? So sad. So sad. Makes me want to write a song that will lift Jesus up, that the world will say, yes, you're right, there is no peace, but there is only one peace that will be everlasting and comfort us, the Prince of Peace. Father, we stop now and we pray. Lord God, you know it all. You know it all. We thank you. We thank you that you've opened our eyes, that you've kept us. Father, we ask you to keep us, keep us, keep us with you. Keep us with you, Father. Keep us with you. Keep our eyes on you. Keep speaking to us. Keep reminding us we are strangers. And it's okay that we are, because we belong to you. We're different. We're not like those people. But we give you all the glory, and we ask you, Lord, to use us to speak life to these people that don't know you, because they're everywhere. And they're, the majority of the world doesn't know you, Lord. The majority, because it says that the remnant the remnant. So we ask, Father, that, that you have your power come out of us. When we do speak to some stranger, that, Father, they will have an open heart to hear, an ear. They will open their heart. They will receive you. And that you will give us the boldness to ask them 
Do you want to receive the Lord? And they will say yes. In Jesus name. Now Father. Help us to go about our day. Accomplish what we need to. Be with us. Give us your favor. Your protection. Thank you for every person that's real that doesn't come on any media father and say that everything is going to be wonderful in 2017 that's just not true you know that lord we know that lord but we ask you to keep us keep us as we go through this year because it will rain on the just and the it will rain on everybody so we thank you father and we ask for your blessing this day and we use our oil father that you've given us wherever it is in our home because you will bless whatever we have lord protect us lead us guide us this day in Jesus name amen I feel so much better the presence of the Lord is so strong in this room I I pray you feel it as well right where you are and I pray that it goes with you the rest of the day be sure to send your prayer requests your praise reports please so that we can lift you up and we can rejoice with you and let us know let me know so that I can share it with the body how you are blessed by God in Jesus name I love you
Cause I might slip away 